So now I'm going to start the proceedings of the day with the first speaker of the day, who is Bruce Kent, and he's going to speak on strategies and solutions to Afghan war. And Bruce Kent is vice president of Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament and vice president for the movement for the abolition of war. A prolific peace activist, my mentor, in a sentence, the father of the UK peace movement. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Bruce Kent. grandfather would be more appropriate. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much, VJ. Um, uh, anybody who's going to talk about strategies and solutions has got a much bigger head and much greater knowledge of Afghan situation than I have, but I've got some remarks which relate to some of this. To start with, um, uh, I'm, uh, I'm legally minded and, um, and I'm UN minded. And uh, I think the very fact that in Afghanistan at all, as a result of a gross breach of the UN Charter, and it took place in 2001. And it took place as an act of, effectively, of revenge by George Bush Jr. because the Twin Towers had been attacked. That's what happened. He tried to get Security Council approval for what he intended to do. He couldn't get Security Council approval. So he went back and decided to rely on Article 51. But it's too late, because Article 51 is actually for immediate response when you're attacked until the Security Council takes over. In this case, he went to the Security Council, who refused to be involved in this, and he, he went ahead with the war. And what did we do? Clown State, Tony Blair, we followed suit. And to me, whatever UN resolutions have been passed subsequently, we started on a criminal basis. That's my position on this issue. And, uh, and there's no way a burglar who bursts no way a burglar, a burglar who bursts into your house but subsequently gets the local council to approve his action, is actually justified in his role as a burglar, and that's where we were. And what was it all about? On the allegation that uh, the, the Al-Qaeda would be trained and the Taliban government knew and were helping the attack, that's basically what was going on. I don't think the evidence is there, and in any event, in the few short weeks of the possible negotiations with the Taliban, there was the offer to have bin Laden taken to a Muslim country for a trial according to Muslim law. That was put forward at that time, and that was rejected. The UN's um, mandate for moving to military action is always only when every non-violent way of resolving a conflict has been exhausted. And there were non-violent ways there, even though the Security Council didn't wish to be involved. So that's where I start on the business. My next question is a, a really problematic one. Who do we think we are, this country? <laughs> Who do we think we are? Um, I'm a member of Amnesty, and I could probably, if many people are here, I'm sure, I could list 20 extremely unpleasant regimes in this world uh, that need to have regime change. Are we taking on the whole blooming lot? Um, uh, we had one ourselves, Zimbabwe. Why don't we do something about Zimbabwe? Horrible tyranny going on out there, people being murdered and massacred. In, in Burma, you have an a, a absolute heroine of uh, human rights, been locked up for years. Uh, we have a whole range of countries, that, and if you look at some of the republics that have ended up after the Soviet Union dissolved, uh, they are absolutely deplorable in human, human rights records. Who do we think we are? The only justification is, somehow, that there's a connection with terrorism. That's the connection. There's some evidence. Well, no, nobody who attacked the Twin Towers actually came from Afghanistan, or was there any evidence they were trained in Afghanistan? Uh, the, the people who blew up the buses in, in, uh, in, in near Tavistock Square, they weren't trained in Afghanistan. You don't need a, a base, a kind of a cricket pitch, to learn how to <laughs> cook up a bomb. Or you do it on your email and you go around and get some fertilizer from the, from the local market. It's not a big problem. Um, and uh, exactly, you know, that terrorism is a matter of what's in your head, not what a bit of ground you're standing on. And my, my feeling is, in all this, we are actually manufacturing terrorists. Yeah. And we are, because of the way we are treating Muslims around the world. One of the great things of, uh, of Obama, whom I greatly respect, and I certainly hope uh, positively for his outcome, uh, that he apologized to the Muslim world in May from Cairo. He said, we in the West have treated you very badly over the years. And he, we have. We've sustained regimes of the dictatorships, like Egypt, which is undoubtedly a dictatorship. Uh, we have Saudi Arabia, a corrupt monarchy in my terms. Uh, Israel, we've tolerated so many things that they've been doing to the Palestinians. Of course, if I was a Muslim, I would feel very hot under the collar about all those things. And I have no doubt, no doubt, the 
young Muslims will turn to violence when they see their people being treated in this way. And we've reached the position in this country, we're meant to be defending human rights in Afghanistan, in this country <laughs> you can be locked up, and I know several who are locked up for years, either under control orders or in prison, usually long lasted, you can be locked up without even knowing who accused you or what they, you were accused of. That's how low British law has now reached. That's the situation here. And if that doesn't <coughs> manufacture terrorists, I'd be surprised if anything can manufacture them. Of course it does. Indignation just spreads. The terrorist link, I don't think, is proved, and I don't think that it's a, an intelligent way to deal with terrorism. We did it in Northern Ireland, we, we attempted counterinsurgency, but at the end there was a political solution. We dealt with the people who we call terrorists. Remember Mrs. Thatcher? Nelson Nelson Mandela was a terrorist. Uh, all <coughs> terrorists somehow come in from the cold eventually, and we actually begin to talk to them, because the political settlement is absolutely essential. So I think that uh, we are in a, a great mess, and I think we are the worst people to be occupying or in, involved in Afghanistan. I, I, I read, and this is the only substantial point I think that I made, but perhaps a bit unusual, because I'm surprised nobody else seems to have read this. This comes from uh, Mr. Lafrey, who was Afghan foreign minister from 92 to 96. I don't know, he now teaches in the university in New Zealand. And he said, and I think it makes sense, that if the government in Afghanistan, however corrupt and wobbly it may be, if the government wants foreign troops in Afghanistan, and apparently these ones do at the moment, and they want Western ones, but if there's a genuine need for foreign troops, then they should not be from the West, they should be Muslim troops from a Muslim country. And that should go to the General Assembly of the United Nations. And we should say there, we are, we have, we are a busted flush. We can't operate, there's no military solution. We go on forever and ever pouring troops in. Public opinion totally opposed to it in this country, now running to three quarters of the population against it. I think that we need to go to the General Assembly and say, we've made a mess, very sorry about all this. Uh, now we need some help and we need Muslim countries to come forward if they're needed in Afghanistan. That seems to me the only intelligent way forward. So that's all I've really got to say. Uh, grandfathers can go on for hours and hours talking and reminiscing, it's very boring, so I won't do any more boringness. I've made my point, I think we should not be there. We were illegally started in there, and I think there are other ways out than the one that we're present conducting. Thank you very much.